Welcome to the Alliance series of webinars on the voluntary targets for road safety that the UN recently approved. In November 2017, United Nations member states reached consensus on 12 global performance targets that all together work towards reducing road deaths and align with Sustainable Development Goals 3.6 and 11.2. The second phase of our webinar series hones in on each of the targets and aims to show simple approaches that NGOs can take to help their governments to implement each of the targets in a meaningful and effective way. This webinar looks at Target 3. By 2030, all new roads achieve technical standards for all road users that take into account road safety or meet a three-star rating or better. And target four, by 2030, more than 75% of travel on existing roads is on roads that meet technical standards for all road users that take into account road safety. In this webinar, Keith Johnson of the Fund for Global Health a coordinating member of the Three Star Coalition describes how you can advocate with your government for minimum three star roads. The webinar will be backed up by a practical example presented by Matla Otsuhili of Alliance Member Society of Road Safety Ambassadors, or SOSA, from Botswana. It's based on their experience of using star ratings to advocate with their government. The material in this webinar is taken from our webinar series, Let's Get Min Minimum Three Star Roads by 2020, which Keith refers to in his presentation. You can listen to the full set via the webinar page on this web website. Thank you, Lotta. The title of this webinar is Advocating for Three Star Roads with Your Government, Preparation and Learning from a Coalition Partner. My name is Keith Johnson. I am the Director of Advocacy at Fund for Global Health. Let's look at the next slide. A coordinating member of the Three Star Coalition. The Three Star Coalition is a group of like-minded organizations that advocate for three star or better roads at the World Bank and around the world. Through such advocacy activities as lobbying World Bank executive directors, working with governments to earn their support, building coalitions, and generating media. And again, as Lotus said, we also have with us Matla Otsuhile, coordinator of the Society of Road Safety Ambassadors in Botswana, to share his experience promoting star ratings with his government. Here's the agenda for this webinar. We'll look at why advocate with your government for three star or better infrastructure on your country's roads, how to prepare to meet with government officials, what you could ask them when you meet, and finally, Matla will share his story and we'll look at lessons learned from that. So, why advocate for three star or better roads? I recommend watching this video, which we couldn't play here due to technical difficulties. You can find it by Googling, quote, Save Kids Lives Film. It shows the highly dangerous roads that many kids have to cross every day just to get to school. 500 kids a day. Don't make it. So the reason to advocate with your government is that safe ways to cross the road save lives. Such things as crosswalks, pedestrian bridges, and many other safe road features are your government's responsibility. Achieving safety ratings of three stars or better, especially on the highest risk roads in your country, is one of the best ways to save hundreds of lives and prevent many more serious injuries. These are the things to do to prepare for advocacy. Some of them you may have done already. Number one, listen to webinar number one in this series on the International Road Assessment Program and get your questions about it answered. Learn to speak well about the issue. Learning to speak well about the issue and why it's important is your most powerful advocacy tool. So I encourage you to practice your pitch. This will probably be the first time your listeners have heard about star rating roads for safety, and it's important to make a good first impression. Number two, be ready to talk about the most important road safety facts and stories in your country and what your organization has been doing. This should be something you're already quite familiar with. Number three, Find out which government agency or agencies are responsible for road building in your country. 
province or state, and whether there is a department or a separate agency in charge of road safety. Number four, find out who the policy decision makers are in those agencies. You may not get to the decision makers right away, so you may need to approach lower level staff first. You may know people who have connections with the right people. Ask them for help. Go to policy people, not technical people like engineers. And number five, it's possible that IRAP may already be working with your government. If you learn that it has been, let's talk about how you can build on their efforts. So let's say you get a meeting. What's your goal? What do you want your government to do? Number one, uh, request that they star rate a high-risk road or road design of at least 50 kilometers in length and that a safer road investment plan be written based on the assessment. The safer road investment plan will list the features that should be incorporated to bring the road up to a three-star or better rating for all road users. We suggest that along with this, you propose a three-day workshop introducing engineers to IRAP's road assessment methods and software, using the assessment of the high-risk road as a training example. These things can be done for a budget of about $50,000. The actual amount will, of course, vary depending on the particular characteristics of the road. Finally, if uh, they agree to the above, you'll also want to request that the countermeasures recommended by the Safer Road Investment Plan be implemented. In other words, that the upgrade actually be done. An assessment is a start, but actually implementing the recommendations is most important. The cost of this will, of course, depend on the road itself and the specific measures needed. As we said earlier, Matlao Tsohile is head of the Road Safety Society of Road Safety Ambassadors in Botswana, and we're going to hear what he has done so far with the Botswana Ministry of Transport and Communication. Before he starts, let me note that the his organization invited Stephen Stacy from IRAP to come do a presentation, and fortunately he was able to come to Botswana. However, IRAP is a small organization and going forward will not be able to send, send someone to a country without a significant expression of interest. This is why we're inviting you to be the one to take the initial steps to inform your government about and urge them to use star ratings to upgrade roads. When you get to a point where you need to consult with IRAP, we can help you make the connection. Here's Matla. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Mata Utsuhile in Botswana. I'm going to give giving you our Botswana experience. I'm the founder and coordinator of Society of Road Safety Ambassadors. We are a road safety NGO in Botswana. We are also involved in the IRAP three-star rating uh, program, and we actually invited an IRAP uh, rep to come and make a presentation in Botswana. Next slide, please. Uh, it all started when we joined the three-star coalition. We were interested in what they were doing. We were interested in the rating, looking at our roads, and also relating to the decade of action. So we joined the, the Three Star Coalition in October 2015, and in our talks, we managed to see what um, Three Star Coalition is all about, and the call for countries to adopt the Three Star Rating. That is why we set up a meeting with them. In fact, we were to attend the Global High Level Pro Safety Conference in Brasilia, where we met with an IRAP representative, Keith Johnson, where we sat down to further talk about uh, the three-star coalition and the three-star um, methodology. We were able to agree on a date on which the IRAP uh, meeting will be held in Botswana, and the date was uh, 21st of January. Now, in our meeting in Brasilia, we were with uh, Namibia entourage and the Botswana entourage, and we were able to set up an appointment for IRAP to come to Botswana. Next slide, please. Now, we set a, meet, uh, a meeting when we came back from the Brasilia conference. 
we sat with the entourage that we are sent to represent Botswana. It was the chief executive officer of Motor Vehicle Excellent Fund. It was the deputy permanent secretary of the Ministry of Transport and Communication and the head of the road safety unit. Now with that entourage, we were able to uh, prepare for the meeting together because they already knew about IRAP. And so we sat down to prepare uh, for the meeting. We also um, managed to talk to the director of transport and safety because we wanted the minister and the permanent secretary to attend. Now going there as individuals, it was very, very difficult. Even this other entourages or this other representative that we went with, it was very difficult for them to make an appointment on our behalf. But we made use of the director of um, Department of Road Transport and Safety. This department falls under the Ministry of Transport and Communication. We were able to use this because he was our network, we have worked before. So he was able to make an appointment for us and we were able to make an appointment with the minister and the permanent secretary on our behalf. Can you continue, please? So now, after setting up the meeting, the appointment was honored. Now, the purpose of this meeting was just to prepare for the presentation because this was the first time the secretary saw us or knew about us. They knew about us in the paper. But now our role was to convince him that we need the three-star rating and to show us indeed we are relevant to his ministry and to his mandate. So we also came up with our partner who is um, also a love member of uh, the FIA, FIA Foundation, um, Mr. Simon. By virtue of his level as a director, it was adding credibility to what we were coming up with. So we were able to share our successful projects. We were able to share about the three-star rating and about the coming of an Arab uh, a representative. And we also requested that he also attend and also to invite um, his officials in the ministry. He showed interest in coming to the presentation and he also uh, showed interest in inviting uh, his members. Now, it's very, very critical to involve people in the high hierarchy, to get their buy-in, to prepare them before the other day or before the presentation. Next slide, please. Now, after finishing with the uh, permanent secretary, we went back to prepare now for the presentation, which was the next day. It was fortunate because we were able to lobby for assistance from the lead agencies that we have been working with. That is from the entourage that we went to at Brasilia, where they pledged uh, a venue for the um, for the mission. They also pledged uh, um, 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 catering for the event. So because we have involved them, they were eager to help us. Even from their different organizations, they invited their officials. So when you are preparing for the presentation, make sure that all the heads of department are aware of the presentation and they are invited because they will make the job simpler by inviting their officials by also supporting the call. And when you are sending invitations, it is very critical to send them through also this head of departments because if you are doing it on your own, it is going to take time. But if you are to send invitations also, make sure you send them on time give them time so that you can also give yourself time to make follow-ups and make sure that you keep on reminding them about the meeting at an interval you will set. And also, it is very critical to look at the date so that it is conducive for all the stakeholders so that it does not clash with any activity of uh, the particular people you are interested in. And lastly also, when you are planning for this, make sure you have a plan B, should anything go wrong. When we were inviting all these people, some of them did not come. Now, we had planned that if somebody does not come who is very critical, we'll set up a face-to-face -face meeting. Now, that is a contingency plan. Next slide, please. And one of the critical things is to prepare for the meeting, research, 
be relevant when we meet especially people of this high caliber get the facts you research so that uh, you have able to get a buy-in and that you are able to relate three-star rating to the strategy of the organization or three-star rating to the strategy of the Ministry of Transport. That's what we did. We got the statistics, we got um, the reports especially of the previous uh, road audit which was able to make a case that indeed we need three-star rating in our roads. Next slide please. Now the meeting indeed went okay and that is why we also set up a side face-to-face -face meeting with the minister and the permanent secretary. Now this was uh, an insightful meeting where an I representa uh, representative was to make uh, a presentation to the minister face-to-face. -face. Now they also made their homework by researching about the frameworks and the laws of the country or the strategy. In this case, they were able to align their presentation to the Botswana National Road Safety Strategy. This was to ensure a buy-in. That is why after the presentation, the permanent secretary saw it fixed that we sent a written proposal showing interest in the work to show that indeed this was relevant to the ministry and to the country. And the permanent secretary lamented of the high number of accidents. The minister was also impressed, especially given that the minister is holding a political portfolio. He is new to the ministry. He was very eager to do something new, something that no minister has done before or no politician. So indeed, he showed interest. Next slide, please. Now, after having said that, we were able to send the proposal as requested and after we sent on a weekly basis, we because we had the e maybe exchanged our business cards and we were able to have a link with the secretary or the PA to the permanent secretary. So on a weekly basis, we send a message to say, have you seen our proposal? How far are we? So indeed, it is very, very critical to make sure that you keep on reminding them about the importance of this proposal. And also what we did was that once we are still waiting for the response, we were mobilizing other stakeholders such as the chief engineer so that they are able to appreciate this and also to lobby on our behalf to the minister and the relevant departments. So it is going to make it easier when we make follow up that we are not alone. What is our way ahead? You should have a plan to know what you are doing ahead. The thing is to keep on following up because uh, this is something new, this is something great. They don't know the agency, but we need to keep on following up and we don't give up. And one thing that we are trying to do is to involve the media uh, lobbying our government in a public forum to adopt this. We are intending to get the public mercy and the public attention so that they are able to see this importance and also help us to lobby the government. And also what we are trying to do is to set up an appointment with our development partners like the World Health Organization who will help us to lobby on behalf of the government. And lastly, what is important is to always have a contingency plan. Thank you, Mala. There are many good points you make that I'd like to highlight. First of all, how did you get to the top people? Sorsa had worked with the Department of Road Transport and Safety on other activities. Through this, they got to know the director of that department. That department is under the Ministry of Transport and Communications. So the director helped them get appointments with the minister and the permanent secretary. On the next slide, uh, these are some other things that Matla worked with uh, Simon Motaseman from Emergency Assist 991 and the FIA Auto Club in Botswana, who is part of a road safety network and had useful connections. Number two, they got buy-in from the top. The director of DRTS and the permanent secretary of the ministry so that even though the top people could not attend the IRA presentation, they directed others to go. Number three, Matla did his homework, including looking at a national road audit report and crash reports from the police to identify crash hotspots. 
Number four, in the meetings he talked about his organization's other activities to build credibility. Number five, they were fortunate in their timing and a proposal was invited and sent. And six, as they follow up on the proposal, they are building support in other ways by generating a media article and reaching out to the World Health, World Health Organization in Botswana. Really great work, Mala. Thank you very much. In conclusion, we have touched on the reason to advocate with your government for three-star or better roads, how to prepare for advocacy, what you could ask of policy decision makers, Motla's great project in Botswana, and what we can learn from it. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keith and Madla, for your insights. We hope that you have found this webinar useful. Please tell us how you found this webinar and ask any questions using the feedback form on the, our website. Thank you for listening and have a safe day.